Hi all, our instructive game today will have the theme of materialism can backfire. To demonstrate this theme, I'm going to choose this game which was played in the last round of the British Championship, just, just gone. The game kicked off with C4, so Simon not wanted perhaps an English opening, but um, Van Katter played E6, so he's wanting to transpose it into a kind of Queen's Gambit, if possible. Simon not obliges, so after Knight C3, D5, Simon not plays D4, and now Knight F6 is played, Bishop G5, so it's a standard Queen's Gambit declined, so a seemingly comfortable position for White, so E3, castles, now Rook C1. Now Venketa classically plays um, B6, I think this is the Tartakoa variation, so Black simply dealing with this issue of the bishop by playing b6 and chattering it. And now Simon not plays c takes d5. So he's fixing that d5 pawn. After bishop d3, bishop b7, knight g2. Black now accepts the risk of having hanging pawns. So he plays c5. So if dc, bc, we see these hanging pawns. But in compensation, black's pieces can be quite active. And black can often be threatening the move d4. So it's not as bad as they seem sometimes. It really depends on the position. After castles knight d7, Simon now plays bishop f5. And this kind of has some positional pressure, but also a materialistic intention, which is shown up later. Venkata is quite calm about this. He just plays rook e8 here. So this is a very interesting move. After knight f Four, it comes very, very clear that Simonot is after the d-pawn now, and these bishops are also instrumental in trying to win by force the d-pawn. So here is the central theme of the game. You're playing against an opponent that really wants to gobble your d-pawn. And what happens is very, very interesting. I was coming up to the critical position. I was going past it, walking past it in the last round. And I thought, what was black going to do? So this was the preliminary. After h6, the bishop can't go back to h4 now, because Venkata would have g5. This is, this is playable here, I think, with black getting a big advantage. Say so, um, bishop g3 takes bishop f4, and black's king safety is not too bad, and he's a piece up there. So basically... Simon Knott felt obliged now after knight f4. This is a committal path, inviting h6. He first takes on d7. So he's given up his light squared bishop. And now he gives up his dark squared bishop. So look at this position. Black has, for the moment, the two bishops against white's two knights. But d5 is under fire. In fact, d5... You know, it seems as if that is the whole intention of this idea. To now play d takes c5, exposing the d5 pawn for capture. Now here is the very interesting position I saw. So what can black do here? Do you notice any subtle vulnerabilities in white's position? I'll give you five seconds to think about what black can do here, starting from now. Venkata played the move d4. I'd noticed, noted it earlier that the hanging pawns, you know, one advantage is that d4 could surprise white at some point. Usually, you know, that involves emphasizing this bishop on this diagonal. But here there's another subtle point behind d4. And it's exposed after white's next move. e takes d4. Now, can you see the subtle point? of what has just changed in the position. After, after that last pawn capture, white, the pawn on e3 had weakened f4, so can you spot an interesting resource now for black? I'll give you five seconds from here. Venkata played bishop g5, and all of a sudden, black is better. The materialism has backfired giving black the two bishops just to win the d5 pawn. This diagonal is embarrassingly weak now with the rook as a tactical target.
on C1. Simon Knott, he didn't want to give up the exchange. So let's see. If, if he gave up the exchange, bishop takes, queen takes, and it's not the end of his torture. Takes here, takes, and now say queen c6 according to Ribka. So this bishop's still quite useful. And it's at least picking up the pawn, so double attacking g2 and c5. And black would be clearly better. So in this position, Simon Knott elected for g3. So he was being a bit greedy earlier with all these bishop moves, giving up the two bishops, just the target d5. And now Venketa plays bishop takes f4, inflicting structural damage. And now b takes c5. Now let's look at this position. Can white try and hold on to material by playing d takes c5 here? According to Ribka, queen c6 now. So threatening mate on g2, and if f3, queen takes c5. And black is clearly better. For example, rook f2, rook ad8. And look at black's position, beautiful, with these rooks blasting down. And now here, bishop takes f3. So this shows that black's clearly better. This kind of variation. So Simon not wanted to try and keep his d-pawn intact and block this fearsome diagonal of this bishop. So bishop a6 was played now. So Venketa's almost forcing rook e1. So he can take on e1 and now play rook e8. So he's got free access to that e-file with tempo now. And after queen d1 he plays queen h3, parking his queen next to Simon Knott's king. So what is black threatening here? Well, as well as eyeing the f1 square, it also supports the d3 square from there. So bishop d3 could come along very soon with aggressive intentions. Let's have a look if white's played a passing move here, say a3, then bishop d3 according to Ripka. Right, let's see what is black's intention. So, say a4 another passing move, rook b8 would be dangerous. So here we see the b fold pressure as an important element to consider. So okay, so Simon Knott, he blocked White's control of d3. He played f3. It's an ugly move to play. His position already has been obliterated from earlier, from a seemingly calm position, just trying to win that d5 pawn. Now black plays rook e3. And it seems as though there's a runner here, a passed pawn runner. d6, and now rook takes f3 is played. So why can't the pawn carry on in the quest to become a queen? Let's have a look. There'll be a forced mate in five. Queen g1, king h1, and can you spot the next move? I'll give you two seconds. Rook f1 would be mating. Queen takes f1, bishop b7. So this shows the power of this bishop. So this bishop must be locked out. Knight e4 takes and mate the next move after the queen interposes. So in this position... D7 is not playable. Simon not played knight e4. But now came queen, not queen g4, but bishop b7. So what is white doing about this knight and this powerful bishop? He played queen e... No, he played d7. And now queen g4 was played. And this is getting very, very bad again. King h1, rook f1 is mating because the bishop takes e4. So Simon Knott played knight g3, and now we saw takes, and this is just winning white's queen, this bishop a6 check. So the white queen had to go in front, and now queen g4 picking up that d7 pawn. The end of game. So, materialism was punished. Let's have a quick overview and summary of this game. It started off with the English opening, but transposing to a seemingly quiet Queen's game it declined, Tartakoa variation, black accepting the hanging pawns, potential for d4, but um, that d4 potential was still utilised, but in a different context now, after white gave up the two bishops, trying to win the d5 pawn, now came d4. After e takes d4, we saw bishop g5, and the tables were turned, g3, and now with the, f the structural damage was punishment enough. But uh, White's 
um, control of certain squares now was under fire. Like d3, he had to block d3, because otherwise bishop d3 and rook b8 would be very strong. And now this rook e3 coming into the, the position to attack white's king. So this pass pawn moving opened up this bishop's potential on this diagonal. So rook takes f3. A brilliant move just in time. So this nice mating mechanism would be in place if the pawn dare move one step further. After knight e4, bishop b7, and white's king is in trouble. So the continuation was this crushing one where white had to give up the queen and then the pawn was collected on d7 but white resigned here. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.